So coming up in episode two, First Stone. It ain't all about the G Factor and Cattell, Horn and Carol. The best things come in free. And Guildford's theory, Rubik's Cubes, make a comeback. Okay, so welcome back. Uh, we ended episode one by looking at some of the criticism of Spearman's G-factor theory of intelligence. Well, where do we go from there? Now, the next major theory of intelligence was Fairstone's, and depending on how you read history, he either built on Spearman's work or demolished it. Well, he built on it in regards to there being multiple factors that contribute to intelligence, but demolished it in regards to the idea that there was one factor that should take priority, the primacy of the G factor. Now, rather, Louis Thurston, um, 1887 to 1995, date of birth, date of death, if you're interested, um, he offered a differing theory of intelligence. Instead of viewing intelligence as a single general ability, First Stone's theory focused on seven different uh, primary mental abilities. Now, see here how he called these primary abilities, i.e. the overall general intelligence idea should take secondary place in our thinking. The primary abilities that he described included verbal comprehension, reasoning, perceptual speed, numerical ability, word fluency, Clearly from the last episode, I displayed very little of that. Associative memory, spatial visualization. Now you can read more about these in the as prescribed text. Now, next we have the triple barreled name to contend with, the cattle horn cattle theory. This trio came up with a hierarchical approach to the abilities that they believed constituted intelligence. And here's a short video that tells you all about it. Now try not to focus on the pen in the video because it is quite annoying. So as I said, there's a theory of intelligence called the cattell horn carroll theory of intelligence. This is the best known compromise between the singular intelligence theory and the multiple intelligences theory. This theory focuses on the idea that intelligence comes in two distinct forms, fluid and crystallized intelligence. Now, if you remember from lesson five, on development. Fluid intelligence is the raw intelligence. This is the processing power, and it's relatively free from culture and environmental influences. Crystallized intelligence, on the other hand, reflects what you learn from your environment and your experiences. Let's look at the cattell horn carroll theory as a hierarchy. It focuses on three broad levels. The first level is the general intelligence, or the G factor. The second level is the broad level of intelligence. These are your general abilities. This is where your crystallized intelligence and your fluid intelligence comes into play, as well as things like your general memory or your processing speed. Now there's other abilities that go on this level, but these are the main four. And then finally, the last level is the narrow level. This consists of specific forms of cognitive abilities from each of the broader domains. For example, with crystallized intelligence, it would be things like reading, spelling, or language comprehension. And for fluid intelligence, it would be things like speed of reasoning or spatial reasoning. The main idea here is that intelligence would be a hierarchy. We start with the general idea of intelligence, the G factor, where it's one intelligence. And then we go to a more broad level. This includes abilities such as crystallized and fluid intelligence or memory and processing speed, among others. And then finally, from there, it narrows down into specific abilities for each one of these. So here's the hierarchy that they described uh, summarized. You might want to either pause the video or pick up the PowerPoint slides from our Moodle site so you can take your time to soak up the full majesty of this hierarchical system. Now, as you do that, you might wonder what those abilities are on the right and why I've not listed them. Am I just being lazy? Well, no, it's just that there are a lot of them and 
here. We're going to have a look at them, but I must warn you. bigger monitor. So here you go. It's quite complicated, eh? These theories are really becoming very complex as they try to capture more and more in regards to what counts as intelligence. And here are the pluses of all that complexity in this uh, model that I've just shown you. What they did is uh, they produced a detailed approach which allowed for theoretical assessment and testing the theory has proven to be uh, able to provide consistent results across age, gender and ethnicity. And it's been associated or correlated with academic and occupational factors. And the theory has also been empirically validated with real world evidence. Now on to the final theory for episode two. Don't cheer just yet. There are a few more theories to come in future episodes. So let's look at the, this one from Guild, Gid, Gidford, sorry, Gidford. He, Gidford? Guild, I spelt that wrong on my teleprompter. Anyway, the one that's on the screen, I've written out for you. Now, he, like Cattell, Horn and Carroll, also decided to extend Firstone's work. He came up with three levels, but he organized them into a three-dimensional space. So whereas Spearman said there was just one type of intelligence and where Thurstone said that there were seven primary abilities, this chap comes along and says, look, there are lots and lots of mental abilities and the only way of really organizing them all into a construct we could understand as intelligence was through using three dimensions. This three dimensional scheme became known as the structure of intellect model. And he organized it into something that looked like a complicated Rubik's cube. Yay, way to simplify it by making it into an extraordinarily complicated puzzle. But anyway, at least it makes for a pretty picture. And here's one of the better graphics <coughs> that explains things. What I'll do, I'll play some music as I take you around this beautiful poster. And you can go through this poster in your own time. Uh, I'll post it onto Moodle, I intend to post it onto Moodle. If it doesn't appear in Moodle shortly after um, week, whatever week it is, week five maybe, um, let me know. If you want it sooner after viewing this video, let me know and I'll put it up on the Moodle site. So that's all for this episode, and coming up in episode three, multiple intelligences. Is that just a way for stupid people to feel smart about themselves? And Sternberg, how he cast the net out even wider. So until then, I'll see you soon, see you in the next episode, or in the class. Ta-da!